Next, we'd like to invite up Bob Easton. And Bob is an alum from Biola University and Talbot Seminary. And he's worked as a middle school teacher. He has also worked as teacher on special assignment. He's been a middle school assistant principal and middle school principal over the past 19 years. He currently serves as a principal at Corvallis Middle School. And Corvallis is an arts and technology magnet and is a Title I school in Norwalk. And Biola, uh, Bob is also a husband and father of three girls. So Bob, would you share with us? Just as, uh, there we go. There we go. Uh, wife and daughter's more important sometimes, so I uh, want to mention them and not forget them. Um, as Sarah mentioned, we both work for the same district, so we have lots of district support. Um, my, one of my core beliefs, I think, that was mentioned earlier is that the teacher preparation, the professional development, the instruction that takes place in the classroom is going to be the most significant thing that's going to make a difference for our students. Um, so our focus is really on how can we best prepare the teachers to be the best teachers for their students. Um, it's a little, our plan is a little bit better than the slide where it said, you know, step one and then step two is that miracle. Although we do know that there's going to need to be some sort of a, a working on the miracle to uh, make this work out. It's a very complex change and we recognize that. So we've given our teachers, our staff members freedom to say, and thank you, by the way, for the state board of saying that we don't have to uh, take the uh, CST this year. That is a huge um, opportunity for us to move forward and not be looking back, and I like that analogy as well. So we're grateful for that. So our teachers have the freedom to experiment, to try things on. Um, our, our focus has been looking at the instructional shifts, the teachers looking at standards. Um, this year, we're looking at a little bit of a shift at my school, which is I want them to start looking through the student lens. So I'm having uh, the teachers assign their students something similar to a performance task. And we're going to bring those results back and start looking at through the lens of what are the students doing? What are they, what's their thinking skills? What are their technology skills? Because we want to incorporate a technology component. And then analyzing what, what do they have in place? And now what are we going to support them with to move forward? So um, as we look at that, the other thing Sarah mentioned, um, we do have common core lead teams at each school site, which is a team of teachers. And I, that's my belief also is that the best um, support that our students are going to get and the best professional development is through collaboration of not only lead teachers, but those teachers leading teams of other teachers. So um, the collaboration piece, just giving them time and opportunity to meet together, to look at the standards, to look at the student work. Um, and then the last thing is the, um, we also have a, a process for lesson study where teachers will be given sub days. They'll be able to plan lessons together, teach lessons, and debrief what they see with what's going on with the students in the classroom. So again, we want to see what's making sense for kids. As far as the, um, the SBAC is concerned, we are a, a technology magnet school, and we're probably set up uh, in, uh, better than many schools. We have two computer labs. We'll have five iPad carts. We have a one-to-one -one program with um, five classes of students with their own iPads. Uh, yet we still feel like it's not going to be enough and it's going to be a stretch and we're trying to figure out all the programs and activities that are currently in place that will have to be put on hold while we do the assessment system. So for that two or three weeks, um, it's not only that, it's also like uh, Sarah mentioned, the pre-assessment that they do in the fall and then we'll do again in June on iReady, that, that took us almost, you know, for 830 students, it took us um, almost the first trimester, realistically, just to get them through that. So we're trying to figure out how do we do that without interrupting our intervention classes, which are using that program, our regular uh, magnet programs, uh, classes that are going on for technology. Um, and then we're also trying to figure out how to make sure that all students get to use it. The other piece that I appreciate that was mentioned, uh, by the way, I work at a Title I school. It's a program improvement school. It's uh, almost 90% students are on free and reduced lunch a large percentage of English learners. So we have additional issues with students that are a challenge um, that, that other schools don't have. And so we want to make sure that all of our students, regardless of whether they're um, 
the equity piece, that it's the same at my school. I used to be the principal of Hutchinson, and they're vastly different schools. Uh, but we want to make sure that whatever uh, education that they're receiving at, at Hutchinson or any school in our district is the same for our students as well. And so dealing with some of those additional issues. Um, but we, we feel like uh, one of the things that we did, we, our staff took the practice test, and that was really, really helpful for teachers to see, oh my gosh, this is going to be so different, not only with the the instructional component about how kids are answering questions, how they're thinking, writing their answers out, giving detailed explanations, but also just things like on the iPad when you take the math thing uh, test and you have to connect one dot to another and I've got fat fingers and I can't click on those little dots and then when I do and I click the wrong one, how do I click off so I can delete it? And just figuring out all those little details and then teachers who say, there's the software needs to be updated and this laptop's not working and somebody forgot to charge this. So there's just all those little issues that we know uh, it's gonna be an opportunity not only to test the test this year, but to work out all the logistics of, of what it's gonna mean to implement at the school site. Um, let's see, the only thing, the other thing is, we're just trying to make sure that we're focusing, uh, the message is that we want our students to be better critical thinkers, problem solvers, and collaborators. And that's in view of the goal that when they uh, graduate or promote from middle school to high school that they're gonna be college and career ready. We recognize there's a big gap there and we want our students to enter the workforce well prepared for that. Biola University offers a variety of biblically centered degree programs ranging from business to ministry to the arts and sciences. Visit biola.edu to find out how Biola could make a difference in your life.